Hello and welcome to Geek Play Studio Tutorials. So in this tutorial we're going to create the scenery. We'll go create the lake, a mountain that based it on a high field map. We'll go work with the ecosystem painting, some little bit population, with adjusting um, multi-layer materials, material distribution like for the snow. We'll also work with atmospheric lighting and with compositing and all these other add small effects to create this composition. We also, after processing, in a, after rendering inside the view, we'll have additional options, option um, tutorial, how you can go inside Photoshop and just retouch to add all this painting effect inside the Photoshop. But it's not necessary again, you can see it's before, straight out of the view, and a little bit post-processing. So up to you, if you like it, you can always modify or blend them kind of to get to see which one worked better for you. So let's go ahead and start working on this tutorial. Okay, let's go start working on our uh, tutorial and um, I'm using Vue Extreme Edition. You can use Vue Complete or Infinity for all features that we're going to use in this tutorial or you can use it early versions. For example, Pioneer for a version, but remember in this case, some options won't be available to you, like a terrain editor, atmosphere editor, and some other ones. You always can purchase additional module, modules from Caracopia if you decide you want to use them. And uh, if you want to go more in depth with the terrain creation, I highly recommend to have some of those components. I do have a tutorials when we review each component, how they're using and what best selection for you, so you can refer to them. And I will provide link with them in documentation. So right here you can see we have an empty scenery. And the first things what I want to do, it's create a background mountain. Remember this mountain won't be very close, will be a little bit far away. So for this one, we'll go create a high field terrain. Let's take this terrain and move just slightly away from the camera view. And we're going to edit and you can access by right click and go to edit object or just double time click on the edit icon. All right, here we have our terrain. Rate me just a little bit shrinking. So we can see all of this in our window. And currently you'll notice our terrain is created by a um, random seed. And our resolution is 256 by 256. So what I want to do is use it a high field map actually to create a generate shape or our terrain. And this is good practice to do this. The reason is why, because you can create your own shape inside the graphic processing in, um, applications like Photoshop, GIMP or other ones, create your own custom shapes, or you can go to USDS or some other ones uh, website where they provide the images that you can upload it of real terrain and create very highly recognized landscape landmarks on your um, kind of scenery so people see and it will be more accurate to realistic kind of render. But for the purpose, what we're going to do, we'll go use it some high field image that I provide with these tutorials. You can use it as well if you need it. So to do this, we need to go and upload image. But before we do this, I want to increase resolution. And we want to possibly match resolution of our terrain. Right here, you can see 256 pixels by 256. I want to match as close as possible to the resolution of our image. And for purpose of this tutorials, we're going to use it 1024 by 1024. And again, it will be on a far away mountain. Uh, resolution should be high enough for this. If you're doing closer, you want to have a higher resolution. But remember, um, if you increase the resolution of the your uh, terrain, then it's render start a little bit more intensive render on your video card and also later on your CPU. So let's go ahead and double resolution and double one more time. So I want 1024 by 1024. And you can see already we have a little bit more details now showing in our terrain. Next, what I want to do, and it's going and open our import terrain data image. And in our terrain, you notice right on the corner, we have it a load image. So let's go open load our image and this is will preload it for us our bitmaps. I want to use it one the high field that's supplied with um, this tutorial 
and you can see right here we applied and we, now we have this kind of map applied to this okay let me bring this back up our icon and you notice the windows the floating windows so if for some reason it's disappeared it's probably gone behind other windows you can pull back up reason why i want to do this i want to take this picture and have it 100 percent blend to mine so i don't want anything before i just want that image that produced by our image and 100 percent to the pictures will create this of course if you want a little bit mixed with terrain before you can apply it a little bit more towards terrain it's a blending mode or if you have an image before apply you actually can combine some of the images together but again we'll just go 100 percent and we'll go click ok so right here you can see it's applied our image for our mountain okay let's go ahead click ok again and at this point we have our mountain created a couple things i want to modify for this mountain one i want to take on the corner and scale because this mountain will reside a little bit more far away and i do want to create for this mountain look a little bit bigger also i want to go ahead and take and let's place back on the ground i want to go this top point right here and drag and notice we now scale only in our vertical axis and depend how you set on yours it's maybe z or y um depend what axis is applied to this so i'll just go say it's a vertical axis and you can see right on the image as we modified our terrain is scale and i probably just want to leave like this have this tall mountains on the side so this work very well for this okay, this is our one basic terrain um next before we proceed to next let's go ahead and just save our work remember um, save periodically you can also set as a snapshots or different on this case you can always can come back to the step you was working and you maybe want to retrieve it and also just help prevent it some accidental shutdown or something that maybe you don't want to okay so let's go ahead and save our work okay so as we work on this mountain before we do any other shape i want to kind of a little bit rearranged right here so you notice we have our terrain place it and from beginning what i want to do i want to create a different layers and layers will help us to kind of put it our scenery's background foreground and other ones in different places and a nice thing to do about this because we always can take and hide those layers so on our computer we won't see them for example let's take this terrain and just move it to our okay oops, let me go right there there's our terrain we'll go and we'll just place it inside the layer and see what's happening oops actually let's go to hide our terrain if we hide our terrain it will disappear from our view we still have it in our render but it's one beyond our display it's help us to have a little bit cleaner look so we can focus on specific details as well it will speed up rendering on a screen with your video card so if you have a slower video card or other this is a nice way to go again layers does not come with a, a pioneer edition and you need kind of upgrade to other modules it's not crucial but it does help a little bit to organize some of the work you do inside the view okay right here as we're moving let's go and just maybe rename this uh, layer So we call the background okay and as a terrain going i want right now apply some very basic material distribution so we kind of understand what's going on let's go on our scale and we'll set reset scale to one we'll go open our material editor if you are in basic material editor and it's look like this kind of you can open advanced material editor by clicking on the left top button it actually says advanced material editor so when we open our title on top is changed and you can see we have much more options it's what i want to use it okay so let's go expand it we can preview this and next what i want to do is add additional layers so right here we have our default mountain and this look nice except it's maybe a little bit grayish and i want to bring a little bit more darker colors to this more like stone black because if i going to apply some snow layers maybe grass layers i want them 
contrast and pop up a little bit higher. So let's unlock these two layers and you'll notice we have used new natural grain type mode. We're going now in the colors and in the colors we just need to go down and set darker charcoal kind of color. So this is one and you notice how it's already have those spots. Now for the general cover, we want the same. Just not as a dark, but a little bit more darker. So you can see right here our mountain become more blackish kind of look, which is actually what I want to do. Again, if you want to do a little bit more warmer earth, just take the and reposition slightly to the brown. And you notice our mountain will have a little bit more earth-like look. Again, I don't want this, I want black, but it's just example, so we can do this way. Okay, let's go click OK. And right here we said, uh, we don't need to modify roughness and other ones for now because most of this will be probably covered with other layers, but it's will nice and good beginning. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply snow layer. For this, we'll go in and we go click and create a new layer. So right here we have our new layer. And let's call it snow layer. Okay, as a color, I want to just leave it simple procedure as color. And we're going to select and put it too white all the way. You'll notice on this point, our mountain will look just white. But now I want to modify specific areas by transparency where we have a snow. To do this, we need to go inside the our transparency tab. It's why we need to be in advanced mode. And from this point, I want to take global transparency, put it 100%, enable variable transparency, and now we have it right here, transparency production. We always can go and select directly to drive to the function, but I like to use it variable transparency because in this case we have a little bit more um, options directly from the editor that we can use it to modify some of those stuff. Okay, and before we jump in, I want to switch from world standard mapping and this is mapping will apply just only to specific this layer. So we'll go to world standard and we switch to object parametric. What the object parametric does mod it will take this material and apply precisely uh, size of this material to the size of the object we're applying. So if we have it global, it will start tailing or will be become small. We need to adjust with object parametric because we will use the exactly same size of this uh, mountain. We don't need word and we know it will place it precisely over. So let's go now to transparency production and we'll go to edit function. Again, all of these options that we're using right now require additional modules if you're using Pioneer versions or if you're using other ones, you uh, probably already have it in complete infinity or um, extreme versions. Um, if you don't have it, those modules and you want to seriously work inside of you, I will highly recommend to get some of the um, function editor and some other modules, terrains and the material editor, because those ones is kind of essential if you want to go a little bit more in depth with the inside the view. So right here, I want to create um, additional node and we go right click, we'll go to texture map and we'll select projected texture map. So from this point, we want to connect this one to our transparency. So let's just grab transparency drag and place it. And we'll go to grayscale output. We won't use it alpha output because the image will be just black and white and we'll control that way. So let's go ahead, click right there. Now we need to go and load it our image. Select the node and you notice right on the bottom we have an area where we can preload it our image. Let's go ahead and click on the load button again. Okay, and from this point we'll just go in and we'll select the cover image and it's preloaded. So right here you can see we preloaded some image, uh, but interesting options. If you look right how it's covered, we have it black and white, which is a, some color will be transparent and some is not. For example, black will be transparent and white is not. If we need inverse, you can go click on invert. Okay. And we'll just invert the colors. And you notice at this point, we apply it a little bit more with the snow packs like on the top right there. So it does not have it exactly 
full coverage, but it does provide more accurate to what I want to do. Okay, so let's go ahead when we select here and we'll just modify, um, just verify it. We have it mapping mode automatic, our scales offset. And if you want, we can remove the tunneling X and Y. We don't need in this case because we are using object parametric, but if you're using other mode, you probably don't want tiling and you can disable interpolation mode. I'll switch to binary and what's happening. It's try to fix some of those pixelizations. Um, it's want to matter for the far away image, but if we're going very close, it does kind of will can look on that one. So let's go click. Okay. At this point, I want to take actually our camera move up and look down a little bit on our mountain. So I want to just preview how the distribution will work. Okay, go. Let's go ahead. Click right there. Okay, and we'll go to our render. Just set on preview mode. We'll render on the screen and let's set at least 800. Okay, we'll go click OK and let's click and render. Okay, here's our render and let's look nice. But I notice right on the back of this mountain, it's look a little bit better. So let's do this way. Let's take this mountain, hold down shift button and rotate. It's allowed us kind of like locking on. So we rotate once and I want rotate twice. So let's see. We have it right here. Maybe you know what? Let's take and rotate just slightly a bit more this way. So I see on this ridge kind of going, I want to see this. There you go. That is look nice because on this case, when we have it, our main camera and we'll go put it back and take it down and reposition on a little bit lower. So from point where we will view, you can see right here, our mountain, it's kind of look a little bit more interesting. I think shape in this way. Again, we will probably modify or adjust afterwards. But this is give it us in a point how we want to go. So it's look a little bit more interesting, I think, from this way. And we still have it this eye kind of snow. Again, um, I will probably add other ways also snow on the top a little bit. But um, as a beginning point that I think work very well for us. OK, let me go take take this camera just slightly down so we can have it probably about maybe this perspective. And we'll can adjust a little bit more. So right here, it's look very nice. Okay, at this point, it's very good time to save your work. And in next part, we continue to apply additional materials, some flow and some other effects to our mountain on a background.